The reason I haven't done her eye color is because I can't figure out what color eyes I want to do. I'm leaning towards like a green or like a brown, but I'm not sure. So while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to do the, um, the branchy border. So I'm going to grab my um, Tombos again. And I don't want to use the same colors as her hair, but I do want to use some browns. So bear with me. Let me find. Actually, I'll be right back. Yeah, green would be kind of nice, right? Like a nice contrast, but let's see. Alright, so I have a fresh marker from the one that was dried out earlier. Yeah, it's a nice color. Let me do that. So I'm going to do the branches in this color. Um, so I'm going to just start by um, basing them out, and then um, I'll add more pencil over it. So where do I want to start? I guess I'll start up here. Basically coloring in most of the branch and not leaving too much white of the paper, or not white of the paper, I guess. But what's cool about the Tombos is, is the more you layer them, the darker they get. It's like a watercolor, a water-based. So I'm going to just use the same color. I'll just go over the same spot a couple of times in the darker areas. And this will create some depth. And then I'll go over it with pencil too. All right, so now let's do the birdie branch. I want it to be quite light. So I'll just do one layer there. But then this one back here, I'm gonna do dark like that one. And this may blend into her hair a little bit. And I'm basically ignoring most of these texture lines because I'm going to go over that with pencil. You can kind of see through the marker. I don't know if you guys can, but I can. You can kind of see through the marker where those texture lines are. So I'm going to go over that um, with pencil. Maybe do it with the marker too, why not? Welcome back. Yes, I am still working on it. We are chugging right along. Having a good time, though. Mm-hmm. I will have to go back to work soon. Or start working, actually. But that's okay. I'll just work late today. Totally worth it. So what's great about the Tombos is, is most people complain that they're streaky, but I find that for textured objects like bark, it actually works great. That streakiness is to our benefit. So that's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, I work from home. And 
yep, as long as I get my work done, nobody complains when it starts or stops, so. Unless I have a meeting, but I don't have any meetings today, so we're good. <laughs> okay. So I know that the branches are all going to be the same color, but I do, oh, sorry, is it focused? I do, for continuity's sake, tend to work to follow the branches as I go. Is it not focusing? Shoot. Let's see if I can, I didn't even notice. Um, okay, well, the Tombo set that started me off, which is all the browns that I'm using now, um, is the portrait set. And I like getting them in the sets because I feel like it's a better bargain than um, buying them individually. So I would recommend the portrait set, which is a lot of neutrals, like browns and um, peaches. Um, and that set really was my first set it start me off and I actually did one um Kirby Roseanne's uh spread with that you can see that on my Instagram it's the bunny spread <clears throat> excuse me so um yeah that that set if you're only going to buy one set that's the set I would buy but um they have a lot of other nice sets too like I love the landscape set if you're doing scenery with it um so yeah, it just kind of depends on what you're going to use them for. Um, but now at this point I have most of them. Like, I started out with just one marker set. My boyfriend gave me it for my, actually for Christmas last year. And um, he gave me the portrait palette because he knows I love doing portraits best. But then, um, yeah, I just I just got addicted to them and now I have almost all of them. I just buy them one set at a time and then um and now oh the other set that i really love for like um basing things out is the pastel set too so if you are only getting two sets then i would get the portrait and the pastel because the pastel set they're all lighter colors and so um and you can layer them and layer them to the, so that they get darker um, so that one's really good for like shading and it's less intimidating because they're lighter colors. So yeah, I really love that set too. So much fun though. I really love them. Um, and now I buy them, um, like I replace them individually as I need to. Like this one was a fresh one, but the original color from this came from the portrait palette. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I could go on about them, obviously. I just did. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And they're not smelly. They really have no odor whatsoever. Um, so if you have a sensitive nose and that's why you don't like the Copics, well, or alcohol-based markers, well, these are awesome. And these also don't bleed through. Actually, this paper, let's see. Okay, so it did bleed through a little in the Copics where, but, oh, and I've got like pencil lines on it, sorry. But, um, but yeah, these, these Tombow markers don't bleed through even the thin papers 
from um, like coloring books like I've used these in um, Mythomorphia and they don't go through to the other side um, same with like Joanna Basford's books um, so it's really nice for like double-sided books where you don't want to ruin the page on the other side um, they really are awesome and I'm not sponsored in any way by any of these brands that I use I just use what I like so you guys know like my opinions are 100% genuine <laughs> okay well yeah um, Copics are really really lovely and I do love them like I've used the Copics in um, Serene um, actually I, get, I can show you I have a work in progress in Serene I'll show you that a little later um, oh got a little hair sorry um, but uh, but I prefer using the Copics on one-sided pages just because I don't like ruining the other side if I can help but my book will be one-sided, so that's good. You guys won't have to worry about it. So you could use Copics in the regular standard edition. Um, let's start again over here. Gosh, I'm getting hungry. I should go soon. I can't believe I've been coloring for this long. <laughs> I guess when you get into it, you just really don't notice. Yeah, it really does. It's so true. So much fun, though. Let's see. So yeah, even though these are streaky, it works great for stuff like bark. Um, hair, anything that has texture, like if it has a texture, then you want it to kind of be a little streaky. Oh, I found a spot that I need to fix. I will do that. This needs a little continuation there. Well, that's good that I checked it then. tough sometimes without coloring it to know but that's why I color my work even if it's not perfect um, I do like to check my pages for you guys try and make sure that everything is perfect or at least as close as you can get I mean they're all hand drawn so they're never going to be perfect best as you can do. I guess if we wanted perfection, we would do like computer generated stuff, right? Oh, you're so welcome. I'm happy to help. Are you kidding me? That's why I'm here. Yeah, you guys can ask me anything. I'm an open book. I'm jealous my kitty is eating right now. I'm so hungry. I think I'm gonna get like, I think I'm gonna go to the store and get some eggs and make like an omelet. I'm really feeling like that right now. Nice to meet you, Teresa. Thank you for hanging out for so long with me. Okay, so all the branches have a base color. 
think, yep. So I'm gonna put a little more texture. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't know why, but when I'm really, really hungry, I feel like an egg. Like eggs are like so for you, so um, so much protein. I think that's gonna be what I do, but I I don't think I have any in, in my fridge though, so I gotta go get some. now just creating some darker areas and now I'm following the lines of the texture that I have which may be hard to see for you but I can definitely see them still um, I'm from the Philadelphia area so I live right outside of Philly um, and that's in the US yeah where are you from yeah good okay and I, I didn't color in the lines perfectly, but that's okay. Coloring in the lines is not necessary. They're only suggestions. <laughs> even my own lines. I don't even color in my own lines, guys. It's funny. But especially in other people's coloring books, I tend to just kind of do whatever I want. <laughs> oh, you're from England. Nice. Yep. Yeah, I live on the East Coast, right near New York City. Um, New York is like about a two-hour drive from me. Which I guess is kind of far, but not that far. Yep, I love my city. Philadelphia is so much fun. It's like a little New York. It has the same kind of culture and the same kind of, um, a lot of stuff to do. Um, but it has a lot more trees and it's a lot cleaner. <laughs> and, um, yeah, a lot more art stuff, actually. If the Philadelphia is the mural capital, I think, of the United States, I think we have more art murals than anywhere else. I could be wrong, but that was that was true at least a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, and I've actually worked on a couple of them. I love it. So much fun. Um, yeah, so kind of no surprise I'm an artist. <laughs> so much art stuff going on in the city. I do like visiting the Met, though. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City is amazing. I've been quite a few times, and every time I go, I'm not disappointed. <laughs> mm, Florida's really nice, too. Yep, I've visited there. Yep. My boyfriend and I went actually not too long ago, uh, like two years ago. Yep. But Florida is a lot different. It's much warmer, much more humid, um, and a different culture too. Much more beachy. Here it's not beachy, it's more like a city. Well, it is a city, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's more like, I don't know, not as, it's more like go, 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 not as laid back, which I don't always like. Um, like sometimes I just like going to beach towns to like relax and get away from like the, like the hustle and bustle. But I also, there's, con there's beautiful countryside farms and beautiful gardens and stuff out in in the suburbs of Philadelphia, so I do love visiting those too. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool place. I love living here. 
I grew up here. I did live away. I lived in Texas, Austin, Texas for a while. That was a lot of fun too. But, um, yeah, I came home. I missed my family and my friends. Yeah. Oh, art galleries. Yes, highly recommend it. Um, really, really learn so much every time I go and visit an art gallery. Yeah, Daria, there are a lot of trees, though, actually. We have many, many um, parks in Philadelphia, which is really, really nice. And, um... But, yeah. But, yeah, it is, like, very tall buildings. Um, the architecture is really cool because Philadelphia is a mix. Philadelphia is one of the oldest cities um, in the United States, so it has a lot of buildings from the 1800s. So we have, like, a mix of, like, modern, like, glass skyscrapers. And then we also have, um, you know, the, the old, beautiful, um, very Renaissance-inspired type architecture, too. Um, yeah, lots of history. This is where the Declaration of Independence was signed, where Ben Franklin lived. So all those really famous guys lived here. Um... Okay, so I'm going to just do a quick layer. I did do some shading with the pencil. I mean with the um, marker. But I'm going to go and do some pencil now. Which one do I feel like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Boston's really similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Boston. I've, I've been there a couple times. Um, I want the... I'm just going to sharpen this really quick. I want the um, branches to kind of, they are a different color than her hair, but I want it to stand out a little more even. So I'm going to go more to the gray tones with these branches. So I'm going to use 1076. This is 90% French gray. So the French gray is a warmer gray. It's not um, too, too cool. But I just want to uh, add a little bit more gray tone into this, these branches. So I'm just going to go through. And I'm also adding more texture now using the lines that I did before and also just adding even more lines and more. Luckily with bark, I think the more texture the better. So, but you'll see when I get to closer to the hair over here, um, it won't, it'll stand out a little more. It won't be the same color. I'm just starting over here for no particular reason. Oh. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, in the United States, um, I think it's very common for people to take road trips. Like, I don't get on an airplane very often. But um, I do visit places just by, um, you know, sorry about that. Why, well, maybe <laughs> you guys can see me now. But yeah, the United States is really, really big. And so there's lots of places to go and you don't have to get on an airplane to do it. Um, I also take the train a lot, um, which is really fun. Good, you can see it okay? Good, okay, we're back. Yeah, I take the train um, to New York all the time. Um, there's a pretty cool, like, high-speed rail line that goes from Philly to New York. So that's really, really fun. I love doing that. And I like reading on the train, like, just checking out with a book. And then a couple hours later, boom, there's my stop. It's really fun. <laughs> and looking out the window and seeing everything fly by really fast. So cool. But yeah, I think in the United States, as opposed to, like, England, you'd have to, like, get on an airplane to go anywhere, because you guys are pretty much an island. So I can imagine it's much more expensive to travel. So it is nice um, sometimes living in the U.S., but I do, I do wish I could go visit England. I have a lot of friends there. Uh, but... 
don't have the money at the moment to get on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I think England's the size of, like, Pennsylvania, so... <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong about that. I really have no idea. But yeah, it's it's it is a small country. But you guys do have a lot of culture and history though. So there is a lot to do there. Yeah, I've I've heard that. I've seen it too in movies and stuff. I would do in movies and stuff. I would love to. One of my dearest coloring friends lives in England, so I would definitely go and see her. She's so amazing, such a sweet person. Let's kind of fix this up. So you can see, I don't worry if I have a messy marker, I just sort of make it work. <laughs> oh, I'm inspired by everything. That's not hard for me to do. <laughs> I get inspired by a ladybug walking on my windowsill. I mean, I'm just really goofy that way. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing, though, to be inspired by a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you think so. Some other people in my life think I'm a little goofy, but that's okay. I probably am. <laughs> but I don't mind being goofy. I'd rather be goofy than boring. I would much rather be goofy than boring. As long as it's like a good goofy and not like a like a like a scary goofy, you know. I don't know how to explain, but yeah. All right, getting there. These branches are really fun, actually. I wasn't sure how they would be to color when I drew them, but now I'm okay, I'm happy. <laughs> I was afraid it would be too much, but I don't think they are. Yep, hanging in there. They'll, they'll get there. And it's funny because you can just use the, the messy marker to kind of guide you. So it's, it's a good thing. Go ahead, let your marker be messy. And you can 
see if I've colored out of the lines and it looks bad. And I just go over it with this dark, dark pencil and kind of bring it all together. Then it works. All right. We need to do the birdie and the flowers too. I think I might just finish this whole page for you guys right here on camera. I might do the background off camera just because it's getting late. Let's just do a little shadowing here. All right. And now, this is the area, the whole reason I picked a gray color is because I didn't want the hair to blend in too much with this. So I'm going to make it kind of dark there just to stand it out. And here too. Can you guys see? Sorry, I'm off camera. There we go. And just that color difference really does make it stand out from each other. Um, I'm thinking about just doing a really light, like, I think I'm going to do her eyes green, so I think I might just do like a really light, soft green behind her. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I am thinking about the green eyes. Either green or brown. <laughs> it is a whole lot of brown, but I kind of like that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, while I think about that, I'm going to do these little flowers. Um, so for the flowers, I'm going to make them mostly white. But um, to do the shadow... Yeah, thank you. Yep, the gray does help a lot, doesn't it? Um, for the shadows of the white flower, I'm going to use this 70% French gray, so that's 1074. And, um, there's like these little, um, little dots for the in inside of the flower. I'm going to actually use those and use the white gel pen for those. But let's just get this inner part of the flower started here. Maybe I'll leave these guys, the big ones. I'm going for a really limited palette here. Um, I want it to really feel earthy because she's a stag. A stag sprite. She's not actually a stag because stags are male deer, but there's a whole story behind her. I'm, I'm putting it on my website, don't worry. So the inner part of this flower is going to be kind of dark, even though it's going to be a white flower. But to create depth and dimension, you do need some, some dark here. And I'll do the same with this flower back here. This will pretty much just be gray because it's hidden behind her hair. Oh, thank you so much for keep keeping me company and talking with me. It was so much fun to meet you. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a lovely day. All right. Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay, so we're getting there with this. So now that the gray is down, I'm going to go ahead and snag the white here. So this is just the white pencil. And I'm going to do just a soft layer. It doesn't take much. And then I'll show you. I'm going to actually use a light blue to kind of give a little bit of color to it. I think I've lost of most of you, but for those of you who are still here, thanks for staying, sticking with me, hanging out. And I'll just keep running though, just, just to show you guys how I'm going to finish this off. So now I'm just going back over and layering a little bit more white in the areas that'll have highlights. And now I do want to add a little bit of color to this. Not much, because it is a white flower, but I'm going to use this PC 936 Slate Gray. And just sort of softly go over... the areas of transition. with a little bit of very gray-blue. Gosh, sorry about the sunlight. It's just going in and out of the clouds today. So this just adds another layer of depth to the flower. Even though it's white, it does have some color to it. And then, of course, you're going to see, I'm going to grab my burnt ochre again. Oh, thank you, Maury. I'm so glad that you like it. Welcome. Yep, I've done it all on camera, so you can watch me later. <laughs> Let's see, 
just that little bit of blue really adds a lot. But now, of course, I'm going to go to my favorite, the burnt ochre. Where are you? Hello. Okay, you are. It's getting a little short. So it's 943 burnt ochre. And again, where the um, hair is close to or touching the, the flowers here, I'm just going to give a little bit of that color. And this just adds so much. And since white is highly reflective, and it really does um, take on other colors very, very quickly, I'm actually being quite aggressive with this. To tie it all together again, I'm going to snag my white again and just sort of clean up any edges and blend out what I've put down with the colors. And by putting the white over, it does knock back the strength of those colors a little bit. So you can see now why I've gone pretty heavy with them initially. Like so. And now, just to kind of solidify what's going on in the very center of the flower, I'm going to snag the 1076 French Grey and just kind of burnish a little bit and give it a little bit more depth to the very center of these flowers. And you wouldn't think that a white flower would be this dark, but when it, in the absence of light, which is being which is happening here in a couple of key little spots. You actually do need this, this dark of a color. And I'm gonna do that over here too. Okay. Well, hello, Gabrielle. Nice to see you. Now to finish off those flowers, I'm going to grab my white gel pen. Trusty guy. Let's see. Prime it up so it's working good. And just put some dots for those little details in the center of the flower. And I don't think I'm following my own drawing at this point. I'm just sort of putting them wherever I feel like. That's okay. Like that. All right. <laughs> So um, another little detail which we have to do before I finally do the eyes, uh, let's do this little birdie.